this is Mark Goldberg from Mark Vlogs Watches. And I want to do a quick introduction to this video because after I, after I filmed it, I realized that there was a, a thing or two that I should explain along with sort of the, uh, the uh, funny approach that I've tried to take on, on, the, on the video that you're about to watch. First, the Daytona, the stainless steel Daytona. It's a, a lovely watch. It's, it's horology. It's a sport watch. It has a great band. It has cool features. There's a lot of good things about it, but I have to say I just didn't bond with mine. And there's some reasons for that. First of all, um, I bought the white face with the thin hands, and I couldn't read the damn thing. It has like no loom. You loom that thing up for like 10 seconds, and then after that, well, I, I used to have to take this watch off if I was wearing it. I would have to take it off after uh, sunset. And even during the day, I could read it a bit better. Uh, that, that's probably a function of my aging eyes, the beginning of cataracts, all, you know, I wear trifocals, all kinds of issues with my eyes. So I have to say, it's probably not the fault of that watch, but I couldn't read the thing, and therefore I just didn't love it. Now, it's kind of um, well known, it's famous, uh, most people seem to love this watch, it's, it's really an aspirational watch, but my motives in purchasing it were not pure, and I think I paid the price for that in the end. My motives were, I was supposed to have one. I love Rolex, I love collecting Rolex, which is all true. So this was just the watch that I was supposed to have and that I was supposed to love. The problem is, I got it and then I just didn't. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the ensuing video. If you do, please like and subscribe. Thanks guys, that helps me out a lot. So I'm about to tell you a very sad story. Pull up a chair, pour a beer, and don't cry for me, Argentina. My Rolex Daytona. I hated it. I bought it and I hated it. Here we are at a, on a cruise. We went together and I thought I would really love it. Here, I'm putting on a really brave face, but isn't there something ringing false about that smile? I actually had to drink a lot because when you look at the face of this watch, you just can't read the bloody thing. It's narrow little hands, it's shiny white face, it's shiny little dial. I couldn't read the bloody thing at night. Here we are on deck. We took the cruise together and Yet here I am looking at the ocean considering throwing her overboard. It was a Christmas cruise and I, I tried to be happy, but it's, but it's like you're in a bad marriage and it's Christmas. What do you do? You drink heavily, that's what you do. You take her to the bar and you flash her around. I bought it because I thought I was going to love it. I thought everybody would admire it. My partner, why am I coveting his cheaper two-line no-date sub pre-ceramic? Why is his $4,000 watch turning me on in mine? Well, I thought about giving it over to the dog. She, thought, she said she'd rather have a rawhide. We went together for rides in the Porsche. I thought, hey, you know, it's a Porsche. It should appreciate a Daytona. Let's go to LA. Everybody loves LA. Wait, no, this is Palm Springs. Close enough. Let's travel with this watch. Everybody's going to enjoy it. I didn't love it. I and mean, consequently, I developed an eating disorder. I couldn't read the bloody thing. I couldn't time an egg with the darn thing. Its little pushers just annoyed me. I thought it would fit in with the rest of the family, but no, not really, it just kind of didn't. Here it is in a random picture that I don't know why I put in this video, but you get a good look at this thing. Oh, and that useless tachometer bezel. Well, anyway, it's sort of like a nautical flying car timing watch, so I thought, let's, let's go for a trip together. Let's, let's travel. Here we are somewhere in the air over Paris. And in a moment you're going to see, I took this watch to beautiful places. We, we oogled cars together. But you know what? I just couldn't bond with the thing and I had the hardest time reading the time with this particular watch. So I took it to church. There we are in a medieval church somewhere in Bayou, France in Normandy. With a beautiful canal that I considered throwing her right into. Of course, that brought me right back to church because you don't throw a $10,000 watch in the canal. A guy living in an estate like this, he should be wearing a watch like this. Here's another random church shot, but is this not a beautiful watch? Honestly, it is. Why can't I love my own watch? I'm afraid that this might possibly be the answer. So finally I said, fuck it, and I sold that watch at a loss, and I bought this one. This is a watch that I can read. Look at the face on this watch. I can read it at night too. Look at the loom on this watch. This watch and I, just we do everything together. I love it. 
I'm not afraid I'm gonna scratch it, I can read it. This watch will go out in the field and train dogs with me. That's what I do, I'm a dog trainer. I'll throw this watch on and we'll go shopping together and I don't mind pushing around a cart and possibly banging it into the cart. I just don't care. This watch and I, we put our feet up together. We hang out with the dogs. I love my new watch. Daytona, I really tried to love you. I just couldn't do it. Hey, you know what? It wasn't you. It was me. It's better that we're broken up now and I love my deep sea sea dweller. There's another thing about the Daytona that I didn't like, and that is it turns out I'm not a super chronograph guy. Um, the, I, I mean, it's a useful complication if you're gonna do anything with it, but I think um, I'm, I'm a little happier with the much cheaper uh, Breitling Super Ocean chronograph that I have for a complication that I'm hardly ever gonna use. So it's a, from the horological perspective, to make a chronograph work, Rolex now with its in-house movement, which is not the most collectible movement they've ever had, uh, but still, you know what, it's a, I, I view the chronograph as a worthwhile complication, but it's just not my favorite. But one thing that I really discovered that I disliked about the Daytona, besides its small little chronograph dials that I found difficult to read, something that I really learned that I dislike is a tachometer bezel. That's the bezel with the distances and, and speeds, uh, you know, around the outside of it. It's freaking useless. No one is ever going to use that. Uh, the only thing worse is a slide rule bezel, which, uh, which I've seen on some pilot watches. Anyway, uh, yeah, a tachometer bezel, terrible. So uh, listen, I know I traded it in for a 7750 movement, the Valjou, which is nowhere near as nicely regarded as that Rolex Daytona movement. Um, on the one hand, on the other hand, it has a, it's a dive watch with a chronograph feature. So that Breitling that I have, uh, it has a dive bezel. And I will show that here briefly. It's not even in the same class. Uh, as the, the Daytona on the one hand. On the other hand, it did tick off a chronograph box and that's something that I, I kind of needed to do. So the Daytona, yeah, it just wasn't for me. To be clear, I used the money from the Daytona towards that blue deep sea sea dweller, but I also eventually acquired this Breitling Super Ocean chronograph and I love its dive bezel.